this is Cherilise and welcome to my February bullet journal plan with me video. Today, I am very excited to share my setup and theme this month that is very close to the nature and I have been looking into your suggestions in my previous video where I asked you all about bullet journal themes you would love to see me do this year. Most of you requested florals and animals, so I decided to do that here. So without further ado, let's just get started with this Magnolia and Sparrows themed February setup. First is this full cover spread. I haven't done a two-page cover in a while, so I thought I would be doing that for February. We will be creating this calming scenery of birds sitting on magnolia branches. We're gonna be painting this on a separate watercolor paper. I am using an A4 sized 300 gsm watercolor paper which is great for wet on wet technique that we're gonna use for this cover spread. I secured the paper first with washi tape so it stays flat while painting and to also create clean straight edges after finishing the painting. Then I started to sketch the branches of magnolia from the left side of the paper with two sparrows resting on them so that it will be easier to map out the placements of the flowers and birds in this painting. I will be using my solid watercolors for the entire illustrations in this setup, then it is time to start the painting itself. We will begin by doing a wet-on-wet -wet technique for a subtle and dreamy background. We're gonna wet the surface first with a clear water while also avoiding the flowers and the birds. In this technique, you will have to work on it quickly, especially if you're working on large paintings. Using a bigger brush will make this easier. You can wet the whole background first before adding paint, but in my case, I was quite slow with this, so what I'm doing is I wet a section, then I add this mixture of pink and gray paint, then I blend it to the next sections. I'm just doing the same process for the rest of the background. Also, I'm making the edges on the left and bottom much darker by just adding more paint than the areas on the top and middle. This is actually my second attempt for this painting because I initially painted the background way too dark that it overpowered the color of the flowers since I'm using a shade of pink for the background as well. I know it is difficult in the beginning of a painting to know how dark the colors we want it to be. Redoing it sounds a lot of work but it's fine for me and I'm pretty happy with how the background turned out now. I waited for the background to dry first and after that, let's proceed with painting the branches and magnolia flowers. I started with the flower on top and then we will work towards the bottom. Painting flowers with watercolors isn't really my strongest area, so I wasn't really sure about what I was doing with this flower at first. Magnolias are generally known for having white or pink flowers and they also have varieties. I have painted three varieties in the end, and I thought it would look weird to paint different varieties of magnolia flowers in one tree, but it's not a big deal anyway. I started by adding light tones of grayish pink on the inside of the petals. You can do lighter than this as a starting point for your flowers as they take shape. Then I'm doing a darker shade for the outer part of the petals, then I progressed by intensifying the colors inside. To create a realistic feel of your magnolia flower, it is best to always look and check your reference photos. I also painted small buds and vibrant leaves around them. As for the branches, 
you don't really need to focus with making it very straight or precise doing messy strokes with this dark brown paint will make it look more natural Then I painted the rest of the flowers where the outer part of their petals are facing forward with a flush of reddish purple tones. There are two ways to do this. You can paint the base of the petals first, leaving a small space in between each petal. When it's dry, wet one petal first and then pick up a pigmented paint and apply it on the bottom of the petal. The paint will follow the water, that's why there has to be a space in between each of them so it won't spread to the next one. But if this happens, you can always prevent that by drying your paintbrush and dab it to the area. The second way is to pick up a pigmented paint Apply it to the bottom of the petal, then dip your brush through the water and slowly drag the pigment upwards so it becomes lighter, or creating a gradient effect. I found myself using the second one for the most part of the illustrations, but both ways work for me. I also added some details to the petals by painting lines to them. The lines in the middle are prominent than the lines on the sides. The third blooming flower I'm painting here is a lily magnolia that has longer and pointed petals. I'm just repeating the same steps over here with deep shades on the bottom of the petals. After painting the branches and flowers, we can finally paint the sparrows. I'm using three main colors for them, which are burnt sienna, dark brown, and black. I started by painting the head first with burnt sienna, then the back of it with a lighter consistency. While I wait for the paint on the head to dry, I moved on to the wings and tail first with browns. I'm creating sections to them and leaving out white spaces in between. Then I painted the eye and neck with black. For the next step, I'm unfortunately not able to press record in that, but I just added the details to the wings, tail, and the beak with dark brown and black. And I intensified the white spaces using a white gel pen later on, but don't worry, there will be more of these sparrow paintings later in the setup that you can follow. Compared to the flower paintings, I used reference photos very loosely for the sparrows, especially for the tummies. But I'm just doing the same process for the second sparrow. I think loose techniques for painting small animals like these will work pretty well, especially if you're just starting out with watercolors because you don't have to think too much about making it very detailed.
after that the painting is finally done next i will cut this in half to attach it to the journal Then the last thing I added is the February title on the space to the right with this vintage book font style that I'm loving recently. I think elegant and minimal cursive fonts would go well with this too. That's it for this full cover spread. I really like how this turned out. I gave myself a few bats on the back, though I would love to add some more blurry branches in the background, but now it's time to flip through to the next page. Here we are going to set up my monthly calendar, but first let's write the monthly title again using the same font. And if you've been here for a while, you know that I like to use the same font for my entire monthly setup to tie all the spreads together. I like to use a small calendar again this month. I started by creating this double border for the layout and then simple horizontal lines to separate the weeks. Then I'm using this Archer and Olive Acrylograph pen in maroon color for the background of the days of the week, which is also a great color to use for this theme. By the way, I listed all the supplies I used in the video description as well as my discount codes that you can use if you're interested in any of them. I usually do a quote page on the other side or around the cover page, but I didn't feel like putting it on that area for this setup, so I decided to add it here instead. Adding quotes or sayings on your journal is one of the great ways to fill negative spaces aside from drawings. The quote I chose to write here is a pretty long one, so I'm writing it in small size. Before adding something to the rest of the space here on the monthly calendar, let's move on first to the other side of the spread. I decided to use this page to write my main focus and goals. I will be listing down three important things I need to prioritize for this focus area and I just drew three big bullets here. For the goals, I'm also writing three of them, but not only I'm writing what goals I wanted to achieve this month, but also the actions that I need to take to achieve these goals. This would be a great idea to help us really break down the necessary steps. Oftentimes, I just write them in, but sometimes I get lost in the way and forget what really needs to be performed for each goal. But after this layout, let's paint another branch of magnolias on this spread. This painting will be an easier approach and this time I am painting directly on the notebook. Unlike working on a watercolor paper, it is best to be conservative with the use of water when painting on a journal with paper that is not designed for wet-on-wet -wet watercolor technique to avoid bleed-throughs on the other side of the page. Even though this notebook has 160 GSM paper, I still try to be careful with the amount of water I use. But I'm always impressed with how the paper of this notebook holds up to it. 
The paper is also on a drier side, so it absorbs the paint with a minimal to medium use of water and it dries up pretty quickly. This journal I'm using is from Notebook Therapy. It is the Tiki Cup of Galaxy design. They have a variety of cute designs and the quality is one of the best options in the market, especially if you'd like to paint on your bullet journal. They offer free worldwide shipping and as always, you can use my affiliate code CHERISE10 for 10% off every time you place your orders. So I'm just doing the second way of painting these magnolias that I mentioned while doing the cover spread. I also made it appear as if the middle part of the branch is behind the calendar. And then the last thing I added here is a light gray background around the painting. But you can also skip this step if you're happy without it. Yeah, that is finally it for the monthly calendar focus and goal spread. Next, let's move on to a new collection that I wanted to include in this setup that is called the Currently List. This inspiring page is by Ashley of Real Paper Pages on Instagram who have made this spread on her bullet journal as well. And this is a place where we can have a quick overview of what is currently going on in our lives. I will be using some of these savory pastel grid washi tapes from the washi tape shop. Again, the colors are perfect for this theme. And then a handmade paper with gold foil details. These washi tapes has paper backing like stickers and a great way to keep the tape intact is to expose a bit of the adhesive at the back so the next time you use it, the paper is easier to peel. I chose 5 shades from the set and these will be the background for the small cutouts from the handmade paper where I will be writing some present participle verbs or to basically answer what I'm currently loving, playing, learning, anticipating, and manifesting. But you can also change some of these in your liking. Then I save this little space here for another painting of a sparrow that is looking up from a branch. Again, the same process is done for this painting and this time I made sure to press record on it. Kidding aside, I think one of the best ways to learn and improve painting something is to actually do it over and over. Unlike my previous setups, in January, for example, where I painted different types of vintage cameras, in this setup, I decided to not make every illustration different from one another, especially for this particular theme. Animals are also not my strongest points along with flowers, so I just wanted to paint sparrows this time and not attempt to paint different kinds of birds at the moment. I usually look at my reference photos from time to time when I'm not familiar with it. One attempt is good, but after a while of not painting the same thing, I totally forget about the whole process. So here I made the illustrations similar with each other, and while I was doing this setup, I realized I'm not looking in my reference photos 
anymore because of painting it many times. But yeah, back to the painting, I also added some floating magnolias and leaves on this page and grey shadows around the sparrow. I think this is one of my favorite paintings in this setup. Moving on to the right side of the spread will be my habit trackers. This time, I'm making a fun layout and played around with different angles for the boxes themselves. So I drew 6 boxes with grid lines and double borders and each of them are slightly tilted to different directions to match the floating effect of the flowers and leaves. Then I just wrote the titles of each habit on top of each boxes. I painted some floating leaves and flowers behind the boxes as well. Then on this corner of the page, I am painting a flying sparrow that is holding one of these boxes in its beak. This is also making the placement of the flying bird perfect for the direction where the sparrow from the currently list is looking at. I don't want to sound cheesy, but I think this theme also goes really well for the Valentine season although these elements are mostly associated with spring. And the last thing I just added here is the grey shadows around the bird as well. And we are done with this currently list and habit tracker spread. I really love the whole vibe of this spread and I'm excited to use it. The next page we are going to create is my content planner which has been the most useful spread for me as a content creator. Below the content title is a small area for me to track down the number of subscribers and followers for my YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. And I also wanted to extend my gratitude for more than 12,000 of you in supporting and hanging out with me in my videos. I made sure to leave my Instagram and TikTok accounts in the description too if you would love to check them out and give your support as well. Then after that, I am making another calendar layout for posting schedules of my content. I am doing a similar layout from my monthly calendar and instead of doing a thick horizontal background for the days, I drew round shapes with maroon acrylograph and added vertical grid lines to change things up. The next page to my content planner is my playlist page. This is another extra bullet journal spread idea that you can create. I saw Mihela of Bloom and Dot from Instagram using washi tapes to decorate her playlist spread and use them as the album covers, so that's what inspired me to do here as well. I cut some square pieces from each of the washi tape here, and I haven't listed down some songs I wanted to include, so I will just write them later on when I start planning and filling the spreads out. You can always leave your song suggestions in the comments so I could listen to them. And then we have another painting right in the middle of the whole spread. This time, I am painting a sparrow facing forward resting on a branch of magnolias. You can also easily switch to brush pens for this theme. I would recommend starting with light markers for the base of your illustrations first and then add layers to darken or add details. 
I know these spreads are painting heavy, but as I mentioned, going for a theme like this, where the elements and the illustrations are repetitive, the muscles of your hand remembers it. Then you can just play around with different compositions or the arrangement of these elements into your spreads so that each one of them will still look interesting. Trying a different art medium in your bullet journal or in general can be scary at times, but the only way to conquer that is to actually try it. Open up those paints and art supplies that has been waiting to be used and don't be afraid to make mistakes. Making mistakes is an important part of your art making process. It gives you an idea about what works and what does not. Just experiment and keep going. After adding the shadows, we are finally done with this content and playlist pages. You can also use this layout for your monthly calendar or to-do pages if you're not using a content planner. And now we can finally proceed to the last spread we're gonna make in this video, which are my weekly spreads for the first two weeks of February. I normally do either individual weekly spreads or Dutch doors with the same illustrations. This time, I decided to combine two weeks in one spread in this Dutch door layout. February is the fastest month, so I needed to save some time setting up my weeklies so I can have more time doing other tasks. So I opted for the Dutch door spreads, which are always a convenient approach for my weeklies. I chose to do a horizontal layout for this. I am leaving the top part for one more painting later on. Then I drew six vertical boxes and I used the Archer and Olive Acrylograph pen again for the days of the week. On the top left corner, I simply made a mini calendar for the first two weeks of the month and then it's time to paint one last painting in this video. I started with the two sparrows here that are sweetly looking at each other, just doing the same method here again. At this point, I am only confident with painting a few angles or body positions of the birds, but maybe in the next weekly setup, I will try to do angles that I haven't done yet in this setup. Then I painted a very long branch across this area here from the right side of the spread. There are multiple branches here, but the main branch is thicker. As for the magnolia blooms, I painted them with different sizes. Some are huge, some are small, and some are just starting to bloom. The final two weeks of my February setup will be combined in a Dutch door spread as well that I will be doing by the second week of the month and I will share a photo of the setup on my Instagram so if you're curious to see the layout and how it will look, it will be posted there instead along with the close-up photos of the whole setup that we did here. This video has been a long one again. My plan with me videos are getting longer recently than I worried about it at first, but I'm so glad a lot of you enjoy a lengthy plan with me videos to help you relax and get some inspiration or just playing in the background to keep you company while you journal or do something else, and I truly appreciate it. On the other side of this touch door layout, I also painted the same bloom close to the boxes here, so when I flip it over, it will just look the same. And that finally finishes this double weekly Dutch door setup. Before we go, let's have a final look by flipping through all the spreads we made for my February 2022 bullet journal setup. It was definitely so much fun painting these magnolia flowers and sparrows. Some of you might be expecting more of wintry themes because of the season, but I think we can be early for spring. I hope you enjoyed this plan with me video and maybe got some new layouts and spread ideas. Let me know in the comments if this theme is something you would create as well in your bullet journals. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you guys have an amazing month ahead. 
and I will see you on my next video. Bye everyone!